Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the fuzzy select tool in GIMP 2.10. Okay, so on my desktop I've got this folder and inside this folder I've downloaded these two pictures from Unsplash. I'll put links to those in the YouTube description. Okay, let's go ahead and open up GIMP software. And we're going to drag and drop the picture of the moon into GIMP. So here's a picture of the moon. And I've selected this particular image because it's good for using the fuzzy select tool as default. There's a good contrast between the background and the foreground picture, right? So it's black. If it was a red background and a different picture, as long as those pictures are have a good contrast between the background and the foreground image, then the fuzzy select tool is a really good tool to use to cut out a picture. So this is the fuzzy select tool. Let's go ahead and select it. And when we select on it, we've got a few different options. I'm not going to go through everything in here. I'm just going to go through some of the basic stuff, just explaining how to use this tool and the different options that you can use. So first of all, I'm going to turn off feathering. Yeah? Let's just turn it off and see what happens. So we've got something called threshold here. So let's set the threshold quite high. Let's set it to like 145. And then we're going to click in the background here, the black, the black content. So when we click that, we can see the marching ants. And the marching ants are going over the this planet we don't want that the planet uh, the, the moon right we don't want that so when we click in the black background here we are seeing that it's selecting um, a lot of the content inside of the moon so let's start to bring that threshold down let's set it to around 78 and then click now you can see there's less of the moon being selected but let's bring it down some more let's set it to around 33 and we click here and now we can see a lot of the moon is not selected but we can bring that down a bit further Let's set it to around 20 and we're going to get a good selection so if i hold down the control key we can see there's still parts of the moon are being selected like inside so let's bring that threshold down a bit more let's set it to around 10 and now you can see it's selecting right around the edge of the moon this moon right right around the edge so you have to be a bit careful as to what the threshold is because that's going to determine how this selection works and it's worth zooming in just to check the selection is pretty good that seems to be pretty good to me now, as default, what really what GIMP has done is selected the actual background. It's not actually selected the moon. So we have to invert our selection. We have to tell GIMP that we want to select the opposite. So what we do is go to select and invert here. And what you'll notice is that you'll get this little dotted yellow line. And now you see the selection is only around the moon. That's what we want. So let's go ahead and go to edit copy. And we'll go to a new layer here. Let's create a new layer. We'll click here and we'll make sure it's transparency and click OK. And then we're going to go to edit paste or control V. So we can paste it here. And it's going to do a floating selection and we want to anchor it down. So let's anchor it down here. Click this. And then we can hide this original image. And now we've got a nice selection of the moon. So how do we check that selection is pretty good? We should really add a background, just a default background. So we'll click on this image here. We'll create a new layer. And that and that layer we want to set it to white so we're going to fill with white color and click ok and now we've got this white background it's only a temporary background it's not one that we're going to use but sometimes i like to put a background color in there just so that we can see what our selection or what our end result looks like so we've got this quite strong background white color really we can drag that to the bottom layer it's probably a better place to place it or better position for it and then we can um, turn on our, our original image and turn it off and we can see what the selection looks like, right? It's a pretty good selection, but let's try and look at some other options. So let's hide this top image and enable this one again. We'll click on it to make sure it's selected. And this time we're going to select the feathered edge, right? And as an example, I'm going to set the radius all the way up to 100. So I want to show you what happens when we set 100, 100 radius. I'm going to click on the image again. And then I'm going to go to select and invert it one more time. Uh, let's just click on it one more time. Let's just see. Yeah. And then we'll go to select invert. Then we'll go to edit copy and we're going to create a new layer. So let's create a new layer and we're going to make sure we set it to transparency and click OK. And now we've got a new blank layer. So we'll go to edit paste. Let's paste it here and then we'll anchor it down. So we'll click the green anchor button. And now we've got a different selection. Well, it's the same selection, but it's a different, it's got a feathered edge on it this time. So let's hide the original image, this one. So we'll click this layer and hide it. And now you can see this feathered edge. And the reason why I've done it like this is now you can enable the top layer and you can see how that feathered edge is working. So you can see that it's taken the inside and some of the outside. 
and it's feathered the edge out so if we were to to hide it we can see the feather here active and if we hide the top one we can see that it's feathering inwards as well right so it's giving us this sort of gradient or this feathered edge and sometimes that works better if um you know it depends on the image to be fair and where you're going to place it so normally i set the feathered edge to a much smaller value so let's show you a smaller value let's hide these top two images select this image again uh, let's go to our magic wand tool and we set the radius we can click inside here uh, let's click inside let's just see if we can click in here uh, and set it to a value of five so let's set it to a value of five radius and then we'll click on the fuzzy select tool click inside here go to select invert edit copy and we'll create another new layer and we'll set it to transparency and then we'll go to edit paste and then we'll click the anchor button and then we've got three different versions we'll hide this version and now you can see this one with a five pixel feather and we can enable the top version and we can see the difference now right it's a little bit less harsh around the edges when we enable our original top one if we hide this one you see like you've got these little artifacts here can you see and if we set the feather on, it will just clean that up. Can you see how it's much more clean now, right? Looks better, right? This is the one without the feather, 5 pixel feather. And this is the one with the 5 pixel fe feather. And this is the one with the 100 pixel feather. So you need to decide and determine which is the best. But I think the one with the 5 pixel is a much, much cleaner cut out of this image. So let's go to File, Save As. I'd like to save our work. Uh, let's save this as um, uh, selection-01 so we save this file as selection-01 so it's just our selection let's go to file new and we'll create a new image at 1920 so we set our HD resolution 1920 by 1080 we'll click advanced set it to 72 dpi and fill with transparency here and click OK so we've got a new blank canvas we've got our original artwork here we've got a new blank canvas let's go back to this folder and drag and drop this second picture i downloaded and we'll hold down the control key and zoom out so this yellow dot represents the actual size of the image and we can see our canvas size in the middle let's click on the um the scale tool so hold down the left mouse button press shift and s or select the scale tool here and we're going to set the opacity for this top layer to 50 percent so we can see the checkered background this is our canvas size let's click on the image and resize it the reason why we set the opacity to 50 percent is so that we can see this checkered box so when we resize we don't go too far if you set the opacity all the way up to the top how do you know what is the right size when you're resizing you might scale in and you're going to see the checkered background here you don't want that so set it to 50 percent and then you can see where you're scaling to and this will be perfect let's click scale and then set the opacity all the way back to the top we'll click on the move tool and i want to move it down a little bit because i don't want these like this is the london eye in london right so i just want to move it down a little bit let's just zoom in and use the middle mouse button to pan the canvas we'll click on this image and then we just use the down arrow key let's just bring it down a little bit to about here that should be good let's go to this moon picture this is the one that we like the most, well the one that I like the most. You can pick any one of these three that you've done, but I'm gonna click on this one, go to edit, copy, go back to this image here, create a new blank layer. Let's create a new one, set it to transparency and click OK, and go to edit, paste. Now we've got a picture of the moon here. It's a floating selection, so let's anchor it down. And let's click on that layer, let's zoom out a little bit. And it's way too big, right, you can see. So let's go to the scale tool, click it, scale tool, click on this picture of the moon, make sure the layer is selected, click it, and let's just resize it. I want the moon to be pretty big. You can click on this middle box here to move it, right? And you can click on any of the handles to kind of resize it. Really, any of these handles you can click, they're all going to do the same thing, but this middle one allows you to position it. Sometimes you want to position it and then scale it. So I think around this size, I want it to be quite large, right? Let's click scale and let's double click on this layer and call it moon now this is our original copy let's go to file save as and we're going to save this as comp for composition so it's a composition image dash zero one let's save our work and the moon image here i want to always retain an original copy so i'm going to make a duplicate copy by clicking this option here let's click this option to make a duplicate copy 
and then we'll hide the original one let's click this moon copy go to color and go to the levels and inside the levels I want to make it a bit darker the darker elements I want to make them a bit more darker let's darken that down and then the lighter elements I want to lighten them up like this I want the moon to be quite prominent to stand out right like this and then we'll click OK so now we've got this moon inside of our London Eye picture this background we can click it and now we can see the whole composition so we use the fuzzy select tool to cut around that moon and then we've uh, had various versions of it right so we had ones with no feather one with 100% and then one with a five feather and that's the one that we ended up using here we've done a little sort of color correction here you don't have to do that you can experiment and do other things with this you can click on this moon again hide this one click it you can go ahead and duplicate it again and then you can enable that one right and you can go to colors and you can go and play around with it. you see what they do sometimes you've got experiment with tools to find out what they do you've got brightness and contrast you've got shadows and highlights you can click here and then you can play around with um, these options in here and see how they affect the, the image itself so you can see it's having some little effect on it not a lot but here you can see like the shadows you can adjust them you can play around with the settings you can also split the view you can split it down the middle to see how that affects uh, the picture it's down for you to go and experiment sometimes I just grab a tool and go and experiment with it so you can see as I'm moving it it's, it's changing the image right so let's just set it to something like around here we'll click OK and you can see it's made some minor adjustments to that you can go back to here go to the saturation uh, let's go to uh, hue and saturation and we can adjust the lightness of the moon here and we can adjust the saturation shouldn't make too much difference because there's not a lot of color in here but you can bring out some more of those sort of earthy colors on there as well if you wanted to do that you can dial it down bring it up change the hue here put some nice colors in it if you like you can go and experiment it's down for you to go and experiment with play around with the settings and this is the nice way to learn GIMP. Sometimes you can sit there and read all the manuals and do all that stuff. But just go in, grab a tool and see what it does. Right? I don't want to grayscale it. I want the moon to be gray. So I'm going to move the saturation all the way down. And we can brighten it up or make it darker. However you feel. Let's click OK. I'm happy with that. So we've got a couple of different versions here. We've got like a colored version. And here we've got like a grayscale. So you can just turn that off and on. You can see the difference. I think we'll stick with a colored version. Let's go to File Save. Let's go to File Export. And we'll export as a PNG called Comp01. Let's export that. Let's just get export. So it's quite a lot, a lot of work for GIMP to export. It's quite a big file. Uh, let's click here and close this. Let's close this. Let's minimize it. So we had our original moon picture here. We cut around that with the fuzzy select tool. Here's our background image. And we ended up creating this little composition example, right? So it's quite interesting how you can use the fuzzy select tool to create a selection and then apply it to a different image. And that's just the way to manipulate images in GIMP using the fuzzy select tool. Let's close this. Let's close this down. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.